Hello everyone, good day to all of you. Hope you're all doing well. I wanted to give a review today to talk about AAC's 7.62x39 Soviet Arms ammo. So I picked up 100 rounds of this and uh, this is actually gonna be a very in-depth ammo test. Compared to what I usually do, I just do accuracy or precision and uh, that's it. But because I've heard kind of a lot of mixed reviews on the AAC ammo, I wanted to go really in-depth. So in this video, I'll have timestamps below um, looking at the measurements on cartridge base to O-Jive, the overall length of all the cartridges, seeing if they seated the bullets more or less in, um, and I actually weighed some of the powder charges as well. Getting it started though, in my usual fashion, starting with the precision, what I'm gonna be doing for this is 10 round groups using my Wasser 1063 in this setup right here. So 10 round mag, just so it clears the bipod. Everything is front prone, supported with the bipod and a rear bag just to keep everything nice and steady. And this is a sure shot armament group chassis. So free floated, so you won't see any vertical dispersion, at least not from uh, potentially inconsistent loading of the bipod and flexing the barrel differently shot to shot. Won't have any of that here. Uh, all the groups are gonna be at 50 yards simply because I'm using a unmagnified optic. Now what I'm gonna be comparing this AAC Soviet Arms ammo to in this video, I'm gonna be comparing it to Vimple Golden Tiger, which I'm sure a lot of you are probably gonna be pretty familiar with. It used to be a very, very common round until really not even that long ago here in the US was being imported a lot, um, obviously not anymore. Uh, and the second round I'm gonna be comparing it to is to Arsenal, which uh, has always shot really well in this rifle. I don't have very much of it at all left, but uh, I have enough for this test. So I'm gonna be checking the precision, comparing all that as well as recording the velocities, see how they differ from shot to shot. So without further ado, I'm gonna get started with the precision. Firing 10 rounds of AAC. This is the first proper group. I just did three rounds before this that you're seeing in the target camera down there just to confirm the zero. I was shooting a little high, so I dropped it, so it should be pretty close to the bullseye now. I or loaded these in order. These are all from box one right here, so let's just see how they do. Got the lab radar running as well to get the velocities. Next group I'm doing, yet again, another 10 rounds, 50 yards, new target. These are Vimple 124 grain FMJ. Next type of ammo I'm gonna be comparing is 122 grain Arsenal Global Ordnance. This stuff here that I have held down with a mag simply because this is all I got in the box, so I don't want it to fly away with the mild gusts of wind we have today. Other than that, everything's the exact same setup. Last up, I'm gonna be doing 10 more rounds of the AAC. So we arms, same stuff as earlier, just different box. That way we can get more velocities and just see if it's any different. footage that you're seeing here uh, this is from a new day i wanted to do one more group with the aac ammo or at least i thought one more group i actually ended up doing one more after this which i'll explain in a bit but just wanted to do just different ambient conditions just to see if there would be any noticeable difference with the precision on target so uh, one thing you may have noticed particularly in the first session was there was uh, some gusts of wind which there's only a 50 yards so it shouldn't really make much of a difference in terms of the point of impact but there is absolutely no wind this time so don't even need to worry about factoring that in. One thing also different this time is uh, I didn't use the lab radar because when I was doing this, I thought I already have enough velocities. I did another group after this, which uh, I did end up using the lab radar for reasons I'll explain there. But regardless, this is just a precision test this time around. I was planning to use the rest of the ammo for just some practice and drills, but uh, actually I had one more idea, hence why there is another group after this, but then that's it. And then we'll get to the actual results here. Right. 
So I was actually thinking, although I did mention that I was going to shoot the rest of the rounds, just practice and just to see if there were any malfunctions. I had a few ideas. Um, I took the flash hider off because on my other AK that has caused accuracy issues. Some muscle devices can cause that, especially on AKs, depending on how they fit. So I saved 10 more rounds, just enough for one more accuracy test. I took the lab radar back out just because using it for some other stuff. So figured may as well get some more data here anyway. And uh, everything else is the exact same. 50 yards, I'm gonna be doing 10 rounds, AAC. Here we go. Let's go over how the groups did and talk about what's going on on the screen because there is a lot of numbers probably a little bit overwhelming but uh, we'll get there so i'm going to just talk about these groups in chronological order that'll probably make the most sense and i'll just walk through everything else that i have up here on the screen as we go so starting with the first aac or soviet arms group that was a little bit horizontally strong interestingly saw kind of the same pattern with a lot of the aac groups uh except uh, of course, number eight was a potential flyer. Uh, if you look here, this is round eight. So I did measure the cartridge-based O-drive as well as the cartridge overall length, which is marked right here. Did that for all 100 rounds that I had. Uh, you'll also note, uh, to go a little bit on the side here, if you're wondering what these are, the powder charge and bullet weights that are not filled out for most of these, that is because I actually pulled 10 rounds, two from each box, and then wrote and weighed the powder charge and the bullet weights here, which uh, I'll go over. But if you're just curious about the actual shot group, you'll just see it's marked right here, 1-1, 1, 1-2. So group 1, shot 1, you know, group 1, shot 7, etc. Just if you're curious about the muzzle velocities, which is something I'm going to talk about later with the overall statistics of how all the rounds did as a whole. But just looking at 8, going back to that, I don't really see why that one in particular shot so low. Um, the muzzle velocity was lower, but if you do compare it with some of the other ones, it does fall pretty closely in line here. Uh, it was lower than the ones around it, so maybe that had something to do with it, but um, you know, there is other stuff at play that it could have been. For example, this one could have had a higher powder charge. You will see the powder charges did differ quite a bit as I scroll through here. So obviously I'm kind of in the blind for most of these rounds because had I pulled the powder charge, I wouldn't have been able to shoot it. So just going to have to somewhat extrapolate here on that. I will say, though, that the bullet weights themselves were remarkably consistent, 122.8 grains, which is not the advertised weight. These are supposed to be 122 grains, so these are actually closer to 123. Very minor, ultimately, not like it matters too much, but uh, just an interesting little point there to note. Looking at the first group for comparison, that is the Vimple right here. One thing I want to note is, uh, you'll see I have this little text box down here. I didn't number these exactly. Uh, they were just in an unsorted box, so I just pulled them and then uh, kind of got them mixed up. So the cartridge-based O-Drive and the overall length are not associated. Just what that means is that round one, the cartridge-based O-Drive, this is not round one's cartridge overall length. I just have them like this because it's easier to see on screen. I couldn't really think of a better way to sort it and still show all the data at once. But... Um, yeah, just keep in mind and so just use the cartridge overall length separately than you would from the cartridge base to O-Drive. Um, these were also very, very inconsistent. I've never had very good luck with Vimple rounds. These have always shot pretty inconsistently. Uh, I did want to pull some of these rounds to get a comparison for how inconsistent or consistent the powder charges are. Well, I'm betting it's more so the former, but actually these are so lacquered and sealed in that uh, I was actually potentially going to damage the bullet puller. And since I'm uh, borrowing all the equipment, uh, all the reloading, hand-loading equipment for this video. I didn't want to risk potentially damaging something. But do have the muzzle velocities. These are in order, of course, 1 to 10. These were a, a bit higher. I wouldn't say significantly higher as far as the muzzle velocities are concerned. Um, the rounds themselves were really all over the place, extremely vertically strong. Uh, one shot remarkably low. Uh, even with the red little like where I put 7.95 MOI, for instance, I completely excluded the definite flyer there, uh, just included the potential flyers on the red. So again, could have been a very inconsistent powder charge, could have been the bullet was screwed up, one and two were something was going on there for sure, and four and six were also kind of weird, but uh, they look not terrible on their velocities, but you will notice that 
the velocity is really, there was a lot of variance here. Moving to the third group, we have the Arsenal. So like I said, these have always shot pretty well in my rifle. Again, they are a little bit vertically strung. I think it gives the appearance of being more vertically strung because of round two, the potential flyer. Uh, but if you just look at that main group, excluding round two, it's still a little bit vertically strung, more so than I would like to see. But it's a lot more consistent here. You can see we're getting about 2,350 feet per second for the muzzle velocity. So pretty comparable so far to what we were seeing with the Soviet arms ammo. If we go now to the last group that I did with the AAC Soviet arms, so group two right here, you can see all the velocities here were pretty similar. Um, we'll get to these lower velocities for group four in a sec. Those were interesting with how much lower they were. Everything fell pretty in line. Thankfully this time there were actually no rounds that looked like they were flyers. Still very spread out. Let's go to group three. So of course I don't have the velocities for this one because I didn't bother recording them because I thought I had enough, which later changed my mind on, of course. These were horizontally strong quite a bit you can see there but overall they did shoot a little better still pretty large group at 4.7 moa let's go now to the very last group of aac so this is the one without the muzzle device attached and you can see for one much lower muzzle velocities across the board uh, again pretty horizontally strong no vertical flyers no real flyers just in general which is nice um, but yeah very interesting how low the muzzle velocities were almost 100 feet per second different when you compare it to, for example, the Arsenal. And even if you compare it to the AAC uh, from the first day when I was shooting, they were a lot higher. I don't think that it's temperature related. It could be, but it was only about five degrees different. So it would be weird for the powder to be that temperature sensitive. Looking now at some of the interesting statistics here. What this is, so starting with the very top table here this is just uh, a breakdown all the descriptive statistics for everything that i shot with the aac however since i did say that group four had an abnormally lower muzzle velocity compared to the rest i did exclude them here so this is all the groups without group four and then group four on its own now you'll see here i did actually do a z test which is just 1.96 standard deviations so what i was doing here is i was looking to see if the uh, muzzle velocities for all the groups excluding group four and all the muzzle velocities for group four, uh, if those would all kind of fall into about two, or if you want to be specific, 1.96 standard deviations from each other. And you can see they do overlap. So I think that it is fair to say that you should just count all of them all together. And if we do that, the muzzle velocity standard deviation is really, really all over the place. 38 feet per second different there 35 even if i exclude group four so it is quite a lot though it did of course drop on group four only but yeah that's only 10 samples in that case comparing it though to the vimpel standard deviation of about 30 feet per second uh arsenal though probably explains why it shot so well you can see it had a standard deviation with the muzzle velocities of just 17 feet per second overall if you look at the mean muzzle velocities so vimpel was going a little bit faster close to 2,373 feet per second, about 20 feet per second slower on the Arsenal, but going to the AAC, about 40 feet per second slower there. So uh, I've heard other people talking about this ammo being uh, anemic, and I would definitely agree. It is way slower than everything else that I compared it to. Now, one thing interesting on those measurements, though, is uh, one thing I noticed is the cartridge-based O-Drive in particular was varying a lot between rounds uh reason i think that is partially has to do with uh these steel cases and i say steel cases it's not just this aac um, but something i've noticed is a lot of the bases are very very uneven so uh, maybe that also leads to some of the poor accuracy because of how it's chambering but in any event um, it was a little bit harder to get the proper measurements because of how uneven these were i did every single one of the rounds that you're seeing on that spreadsheet at least three times and i did it from a bunch of different angles just to make sure that it was pretty consistent and uh it was so what you're seeing there should be pretty spot on these are very uneven which i didn't really realize until doing this test but it is across the board i tested the vimple and the arsenal as well same sort of thing there and these are a lead core bullet i at least currently as of recording this video they don't put that explicitly on the website when you buy these but uh, uh when i pulled the bullets i did look and yeah clearly just a regular jacketed lead core just totally normal like pretty much everything else that you see 
Now, one other thing I did test just because I was curious about it was I did check at night the muzzle flash on the AC ammo, comparing it to Vimple. I wanted to do Arsenal too, but I'm out at this point. And the muzzle flash was actually surprisingly good using this ammo. So the first batch of shots that you're seeing, that is with this AAC ammo. And then uh, the second bit is with Vimple. And you can see, uh, aside from one kind of weird round that came out, almost looking like a tracer, of course it's not. Um, that was it. That's all you could really see on the AAC. Compared to the Vimple, a lot of them were really flashing a lot. You can kind of see almost some sparks coming out, which might just have to do with it being bimetal as well. But point is, these did pretty good there too. So they're not using a completely filthy powder or anything like that. It's, it's good. And from what I could tell um, when I pulled those rounds and uh, pulled the powder out, it, it looks like regular powder. Nothing weird or low quality looking about it. So overall, say AAC ammo, I am actually surprised. I, I think it's actually pretty good, which uh, I was not expecting to come into the review and end up saying that. Uh, I am at this point pretty biased against PSA and everything else that they're affiliated with, like AAC, just from personal pretty bad experiences with them. But um, you know, I from everything I've shot so far, it's been perfect. The ejection was good, everything fed reliably, shot reliably, and um, it wasn't the most precise, uh, but what I'm comparing it to is a lot of the other stuff I've been shooting, like Vimple, never really shot that well in this rifle. The Arsenal shoots well, but I'm having trouble getting that. Comparing it to some of the older stuff uh, that I used to have that actually I still have quite a bit on hand. For example, Tula was absolute garbage uh, and this by far beats it. And uh, actually for the price compared to what Tula used to be when it was available, uh, this is really good. This is actually, at least right now, um, about 48-ish cents around, which is very comparable to just regular 5.56, which is awesome. Uh, I've been kind of getting out of 7.62 by 39 for a little bit now because it was just getting expensive to shoot compared to a 5.56. The bar for what I would consider good ammo for 7.62 by 39 is pretty low. Um, I don't know if, uh, if you're considering this for like an SHTF type of rifle and you know this type of round. Would not recommend it for that purpose simply because of the lack of precision, but um, yeah, something for you to decide and maybe it'll shoot better in your rifle. Um, I would absolutely also just recommend that uh, you keep looking into reviews on this. I keep seeing mixed reviews on this across the board. So the five boxes I got, the 100 rounds, they all seem to be completely fine. Quite good, actually, but uh, I've heard of other people having problems with them. So also, on that same note, I would love to hear if you've shot this ammo yourselves. Let me know your experiences with it in the comments below. And if nothing else, I hope to see you all in the next one. Take care, and see you all then.